on my piece of paper anymore. Good morning, New Hope. Welcome to the Sunday School Hour. Um, I'm going to turn in our hymn books to 252. His banner over me is love. We're going to sing that twice. You stand and sing with me. 252. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Uh, Brother Bill, can you lead us in prayer, please? So uh, y'all can be seated. Um, the preacher's out of town. He's in West Virginia. We miss him. Miss the family. So uh, it's uh, good to have y'all today um, on this Memorial Day Sunday. Great to see y'all. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do our theme verse, Colossians 1.18. Well, you want to do pledges first? Um, Oh, okay. Well, it is pledges. Hey, kids, y'all want to come up here? We'll all stand up and do our pledges. Sorry about that, guys. That's not a big problem. Yeah. Which one do you get? Yeah. Come on, bro. I guess, Jocelyn, you want to hold the Bible? I mean, Julie. You know, Jocelyn, you want to hold the Bible? Don't matter, man. the Bible. <laughs> so we're doing the, uh, the Bible first. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. To the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for redeeming his sins. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Our uh, theme verse, Colossians 1, 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Colossians 1, 18. Thank you. Y'all may be seated this time. 
So uh, we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Oh, oh, that's my Birthdays, anniversaries, testimonies? Anyone? Cool. Any prayer requests? Yeah, I got unspoken. Unspoken. Oh yeah, testimony, praise, and what have you. Go ahead. Well, our AC quit at the house. Mm. And the house is like a barbecue. But got into prayer. Hopefully Monday morning night or Monday afternoon I'll get a call. And he'll come out and repair the heat pump. So by the grace of Jesus Christ, I want to say thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. Any other prayer requests, praises, testimonies? Go ahead. Uh, still continue having prayer for uh, my brother-in-law. He's still healing. Um, one day when he gets healed up enough, we'll bring him to church. Amen. Uh, it's, uh, he, I mean, he's nothing much he can do, you know. We'll just Amen. drag him in here. Hog time, Amen. right? <laughs> so, go ahead, Al. Hmm? Okay. Any other prayer requests? Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Yes, ma'am. I have a praise. Amen. Is that it? Is that it? Everybody good? No, Bethany? That's right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, that's it. Hey, Dean, can you lead us in prayer for the... Thank you, God, for all the miracles you perform for our church. Amen. Thank you, God, for the things that even you can't ask because they were already done. Amen. And God, thank you for our pastor, his wife. Give them the time of rest that they need. And Danny and Ellen, Lord, get them back here safely, Lord, with the kids. And Lord, thank you for Sam. He's been a blessing. And your son's blessed in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So uh, I guess we'll uh, dismiss our Sunday school class.
Uh, what's going on with the Doyle and their class? Are they? They're going to stay up here. Okay. All right. That's fine. Well, y'all dismissed. Yeah, uh, I'll get a chair. I'll get a chair. Uh, uh, Sam said, uh, "I'm I'm getting a chair." <laughs> hey, do you want a, a stool? Uh, that's fine. That's that's more than adequate. Huh? All right. Ow. That's more than adequate, buddy. Hey, John, thank you. No Sam, thank you. My ref, whoa, Randy, can you fix that? Okay, um, my reference today will be Hebrews chapter 2, 1 through 4, Hebrews 2, 1 through 4. I'm going to set the table to what I'm about to discuss, and I ask somebody who I consider knowledgeable with fishing. Two young men were fishing above a low dam on a river at their hometown. As they were concentrating on catching fish, they were unaware that they had drifted until they were not far from the water flowing over the dam. When they realized their situation, the current near the dam was much too powerful for them to force get their boat from not going over. Below the dam was strong rocks, strong currents, they never came to the services. After a couple of days of relentless searching by local authorities, the divers were found one by one, and two or three days, the last one. The danger of drifting is not limited to the physical realm. Hebrews 2, verse 1. Hebrews 2, verse 1. Therefore, we need to give more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now, sadly, it is un not uncommon for Christians to drift towards destruction. A lot of people don't want to hear it. You can't talk like that to me. The Bible does. And if you're mad at the, the presentation, take it up with the man who wrote it. <laughs> Things we should know about drifting. Again, checking with somebody who I referenced. Drifting requires no effort from the Christian. Just stop rowing or tracking against the wind, and the boat will begin to drift. Drift. 
we must take earnest heed to what we've been taught. It may not be what you want to hear. It may not be something that makes you happy. But it's the word of God. It's an unconscious process. It is possible to drift unaware. In a boat, undercurrents are often unnoticeable from the surface. And people with these little small one-engine boats or the big cabin cruiser type things that I've seen certain people have. I, you know, I won't, I won't mention anybody's name, but the key to the sentence is it can drift too. So whether you're in a little dinghy type thing or you're in the cabin cruiser, drifting is possible for everybody. Now, a lot of people want to say, oh, well, my pastor ain't, ain't got the stuff right. He ain't spoke this right. He ain't spoke that right. Problem. The pastor that we have preaches the word right out of the word every day. When he talks to us, you know he's referenced it. For those who may be a pilot in here, in a plane, the wind or gravitational forces move the plane without you realizing it. I didn't know planes could be moved without realizing it, but evidently, yes. The same is true in the spiritual realm. That's fact. How many Christians have drifted away slowly? slowly away from church. The way this world is going right now, you need to be here more than on your video games, on your TV sets. You need to be here in the Bible. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not preaching just you. I'm pointing my fingers right back at me. Okay? Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not as good as some of the people that are in here. But I want to make sure that I get the word out that people need to know the real book. Not some of these, um, how does the pastor word it? Perversions against the word of God. Many churches have gradually drifted into error and only one day to find themselves far removed from the scriptures. People laugh at me, but I say this, and I say it out loud, our pastor preaches the word. He doesn't color code it. He doesn't sugar coat it. He preaches the word. All right. We never drift upstream or against the tide. I don't think that's possible. How can you drift upstream when it is explained to me that the tide takes you out. All right. Faithfulness to the Lord is like an oar rowing upstream. Yes, the rule, the oar rowing upstream. You're putting your mind in it. You're putting your health into it. 
and you're putting your back into learning the word of God. You must be constantly adding to your faith. Right. I'm going right now to Second Peter. One five. Second Peter one five. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. Don't ask God to give you a bunch of patience. Oh uh, yeah, you don't you don't need that kind of excitement. I made that mistake. I'm going to go down to Second Peter three eighteen. Second Peter three eighteen. You must continue to grow. So let's talk about Second Peter 3, 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be both glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. We, we need to have preaching that is not soaked with the modern world and give up on the modern world. They don't need it. We don't need it. The moment you stop growing is the moment you start backwards or downwards. The speed downstream increases. The dangers increase with each and every drift. Yes, sir. And we can hear the noise of the waterfall. It's too late. That big incident coming up for you, you could have avoided it. You could have gotten God's help in dealing with it, and you didn't do it. Why? You, f you failed. I failed. I'm, I'm not putting myself anywhere. When we lose sight of land, it is more difficult to discern that we are drifting. The land, our Bible, our church, our pastor. Right, amen. 
as we move further and further from the Lord, we care less about what we should be doing. It is dangerous to others. A ship just drifting is a hazard to all other vessels at sea. Parents that are just drifting will lose soon the golden opportunity to teach their children. Ephesians 6, 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's straight, huh? I'm in Ephesians. You're a danger to others. Are you going to drag somebody down? Are you going to get them out of church? Are you quit going yourself? Are you going to quit being an example to them? A boat will crash on the rocks over, over the falls. We all know that. For those who drift spiritually through their own neglect, there shall be no escape from just punishment. Hebrews 2, 1 through 3. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, every transgression, every disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which was first began to be spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. That's self-explanatory. The Bible is a unique book. A source of information not found anywhere else. When one loses the desire to study 
God's word, they're drifting. People, and they want prayer by our people, Christians, is a wonderful blessing. An avenue to communicate with a holy and just God. When a Christian prays less and less, and he's drifting more and more. <clears throat> Do we quit? There's been times, ladies and gentlemen, I've been involved in situations that um, drove me up a wall, and I didn't take it to God in prayer fast enough and soon enough. Diminishing desire to be with God's people. This includes attending services to worship God. If we no longer rejoice in the worship of God and in the presence of brethren, we are definitely drifting. Now, I know some people have jobs that they have, the phone rings, they've got to run. I understand that. They have to provide for the family. But just simply, well, I'm going fishing. I can't come to church today. Uh, the, the rocker running. I hope that was the right word. Okay. Think about it. And no, ladies and gentlemen, I am not a fisherman. Fellowship with God's people extends beyond the services of church. We should be concerned with edifying one another. Not putting them down. Not running them in the ground. When a Christian prefers the companionship of people from the world rather than fellow Christians, he's within sight of the rocks and spiritual destructions coming. When one obeys the gospel, he knows God has blotted out his sins. Thank you, God, for our salvation. Made him a new creature in Christ. He wants to tell the world about Jesus. When a Christian no longer has the desire to take the message of salvation to others, he is drifting. Do they seek the thrills of things of this world, such as great honors by the world. The Apostle John warns us against the love of the world and the things that are in the world. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Let me make sure I don't go too far here. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world passes away, 
and the lust thereof. But he that do the will of God will abide forever. The will of God. Every day. All day. We need to pray. We need to read. I know some people have secular jobs. I know they work hard. But they can make a little time at the end of the day to have some Bible reading. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm still pointing fingers at me too. Remedies against drifting. Keep on rowing. Spiritually speaking, this involves diligence. Second Peter one ten. Second Peter one ten. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Hmm. There is no place for retirement in the living the life of a Christian. Watch out for undercurrents. We must all be on guard against the undercurrent temptation. For we have a fleshly nature which wages war against the soul. can expect to go against the tide. And people need to know that we're going to go against the tide. They need to look at each us and say, something's different about them. Something's different about them. They don't have their nose buried in, in the laptops or the computers or pods or no books, whatever they call them nowadays. They have what they need from the Word of God. We must always be on guard for an undercurrent of temptation. We have a fleshly nature which wars against our soul. Expect to go against the tide. There are many tides that sweep us away. Oh, popularity. I want to be popular. Peer pressure. 
the praise of others. Modernism, skepticism, humanism, and many false doctrines of all kinds. Liberalism and worldliness in the church, probably the greatest enemies of the church in our lifetime. People can pick out a church because what's the difference between the church and going to a rock concert? Neglect. Do we neglect our family? Do we neglect being with other members of the church? Do we neglect doing things as a Christian? Do we have lack of interest? Lack of concern? If one drifts along with the majority, he certainly is lost. And in conclusion, brethren, all I've been saying from start to finish is, are we drifting? The danger is real. We'd be foolish to say otherwise. How many people have drifted away from the Lord? and would be arrogant to say it could not happen to us. Are there signs of drifting in your life? Honestly, ask yourself, is my desire to study God's word and prayer diminished or I even stopped? Is my desire to be with God's people not what it has been in the past? These are just a few. I thank you for your time. And Randy, can you bring us down, please?